is 99 GMT. Hello, good evening to you. Welcome to News 360 and it's live on news up here at Adesawe in Kanda. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I'm Aisha Yakubu. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, GT Bank and Calipo. Parliament says it is unable to identify NDC MPs who displayed bloody widow placards. Also coming up tonight, NDC warns it will not tolerate groups and individuals who will infiltrate the various polling stations. Also in mission tonight, only 92 out of 300 persons with disability who applied for District Assembly Common Fund for Persons with Disability in 2018 benefited. And in business tonight, IMF Lords Ghana's banking reforms. Elsewhere in the world, at least one person killed and several injured in clashes at Venezuela's border with Brazil. We'll bring you details of these and more with sports entertainment tonight here on News 360. Feel free to share your thoughts with us. It's TV3 Ghana on Facebook. We're live on DSTV channel 279 all across the world on TV3 Ghana on Facebook. To our very first story, Parliament says it is unable to identify NDC MPs who displayed bloody widow placards during the swearing-in of Member of Parliament for Ayawasu West Wagon, Lydia Alassan. This was revealed by Deputy Majority Leader Sarah Adwa Safo during parliamentary proceedings. On 10th February, First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Joseph Osoewusu, ordered the clerk and table office to produce footages of proceedings of that day. The move was to help identify members of Parliament who held the bloody widow placards for appropriate sanctions to be meted out to them. This was after leadership of the minority side failed to apologize for the misconduct of its members. In response to a parliamentary question filed by Ablekuma Central MP Ebenezanina Nate for an update on the matter, Deputy Majority Leader Sarah Adjuasafo told the House the clerk and table office are unable to identify the MPs after reviewing the visuals of proceedings. The speaker, the information I'm getting or picking up from the table office and the clerk's office is that indeed they have a take, but... Um, the identification of the specific members has been a challenge and the, the tapes have been presented to the first deputy speaker. She further indicated the leadership is engaging the public affairs department to get the visuals from other media houses to help deal with MPs who displayed the placards. I want to assure members that leadership will take the matter up. I believe that that day, there were other media uh, men in the chamber who might have reported what happened. So, Mr. Speaker, um, we won't rest on that. We'll make sure that the directions or directives by the first deputy speaker to get the tapes to identify specific members for purposes of contempt that has incited the speaker will duly um, ensure that those tapes reach the first deputy speaker and the privileges committee. Meanwhile, Speaker of Parliament Professor Aaron Michael Quay has commended MPs during the presentation of the State of the Nation address by President Sekufuado on Thursday. The seventh parliament has done something which has never happened in the political history of the fourth republic and it should be recorded as a good example. And I congratulate all of you and hereby record it. Credit goes to both sides. I mean, well, so th this is what's happening. But let's do a quick recall of exactly what happened on the floor of Parliament on the 5th of February when the Member of Parliament for the Iwaso West Wagon constituency, Lady Alassan, was being sworn in on the floor of parliament. And just take a look if you can identify the people for yourself. You are viewers out there.
So we put this video in slow motion so that you can have enough time to actually identify. Dr. Rashid Draman is the executive director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs. Dr. Rashid, you're, you're smiling behind me because you're beginning to get used to these miracles that happen in parliament these days. But really, how do you react to this? Very much for having me. Um, first of all, um, I, just, I just think as we're going through the story, I was just thinking in my in my head that you know once again uh, it's becoming clear that in our country most of the times issues that are quite straightforward that we can deal with uh, those kind of issues drag and and I don't know why I just cannot understand uh, coming to the specific. <laughs> Honorable Deputy Speaker of Parliament, uh, to simply ask the table office and, in fact, the office of the clerk to conduct this uh, analysis and bring and bring a report to the House, I, I think was was just a wrong approach. Because uh, you know the office of the clerk is uh, is an administrative um, office, is an administrative wing of, uh, if you like, of, of our political house. Uh, the office works for both sides of the house. Uh, I cannot imagine any day when anybody in the office of the clerk can stick his neck out and say, this is an MP who has committed an error, punish him. No, that's not going to happen. Mm. So in the first place, I think the approach was strong. Uh, maybe they could have used a different approach. Well, Secondly, let's say, not to interrupt you though, but, but I mean, uh, Adjust Safo did, Honorable Adjust Safo did indicate that uh, they were going to contact some media houses who were there. I mean, clearly, the, the videos we're showing to our viewers does show clearly the faces of some of the people who are holding the placards. But how does all of this, I mean, and the past events affect the credibility and integrity of that institution of parliament? in the minds of Ghanaians, who they are supposed to be representing there? Well, I, I think, Alfred, in order to get a, a very good answer to this question, perhaps maybe you guys might have to take your microphones uh, uh, to the streets and uh, simply sample the views of, of Ghanaians. But, I mean, for somebody like me watching Parliament very closely and working with Parliament uh, to make sure that... Um, our country is governed better. I think uh, events like this are not are not very good. And you see, that is why sometimes when very important issues that border on the welfare of our honourable members uh, come into the public domain, you hear the reaction from the general public uh, is one uh, which simply points to you know. Uh, these are not serious people. I mean, I'm just uh, uh, trying to, to, to find a, I mean, a phrase to describe I mean, what I think has been the reaction of Ghanaians each time um, right. an issue that, that borders on the welfare of our members of parliament comes to the fore. Right. Uh, okay. This doesn't really um, augur very well for a very important institution of our democracy. Right. Dr. Romani, thank you for your time this evening. Extremely grateful. Dr. Rashid Draman is the Executive Director of the Africa uh, Parliamentary Affairs. He joins us from Burkina Faso via Skype. To some other stories, General Secretary of the Opposition National Democratic Congress, Johnson Asiedu Nketiah, says the party will not tolerate groups and individuals who will infiltrate the various polling stations. He said only the police and officials from the Electoral Commission have been authorized to manage affairs at the party's presidential primaries.
The National Democratic Congress will go to the polls on Saturday, February 23, to elect a candidate to lead the party into the 2020 general elections. Seven persons are vying for the slot. The party said it is adequately prepared to hold free and fair elections. The primaries will be held at centres in all 275 constituencies. General Secretary of the NDC, John Senesia Dunketia, at a news conference indicated the party will not condone any security personnel other than the police who have been authorized to manage affairs. He said police personnel who would be deployed to all polling stations must be from their respective districts. We have engaged the Ghana Police Service and they are going to be exclusively in charge of the security of these elections. Police personnel have also been requested to display their names and their service numbers on their chests without masks because there are no mosquitoes at any of our polling stations. He said no motorbikes will be allowed at any of the voting centers. Johnson Isedun Ketia also indicated the party has picked intelligence that some thugs are being provided with NDC t-shirts to cause mayhem on the voting day. Curfew imposed constituencies which include Chiripone, Bembela, Saboba and Jaman South would however not follow the normal voting procedures. According to the scheduled arrangement, voting activities in such areas will commence at 7 a.m. and close at 3 p.m. instead of the usual 5 p.m. Wherever there, are, there is a curfew, they will close earlier because the curfew starts at 6 p.m. We have arranged that in these areas, voting will close at 3 p.m. so that all the activities concerning the elections could be concluded before curfew hours. In all, 260,000 delegates, including parliamentarians, district chief executives, ex-ministers and former presidential staffers in good standing will partake in the exercise. Now, President Kofuado has reiterated the need for military to in insulate themselves or itself from politics and focus on its core mandate. At a Deba with officers at Bema Camp in Accra, the president admonished military officers who want to indulge in politics to first resign. The annual meeting is to afford the military officers an opportunity to interact with the president on pertinent issues affecting them. President Ikufuado, who lauded the exemplary work of the military, both internal and externally, charged them to stay away from politics. It is in everybody's interest that the armed forces retains the neutrality and professionalism guaranteed under the Constitution. Governments have term limits, and in a multi-party democracy, parties win and lose power. It is good for the health of the nation that this is so, and this is why the armed forces should not tie its well-being or otherwise to the fortunes of the ruling party of the day. The president also urged the media to be circumspect when reporting on the military. I also call on the media to be circumspect in their reportage on the military and desist from attributing political motives to matters that are purely professional. Earlier, President Okufuado presented some 140 vehicles to the Ghana Armed Forces to mitigate their transportation challenges. The president pledged government unflinching commitment to improve logistical needs of the security services. The vehicles composed of 50 buses, 40 hard-body Toyota vehicles and some 50 Toyota Hilux. Defense Minister Dominic Nitiwo said the armed forces has received logistic support from government for the past two years and hopeful more will follow. President Ikufuado said government will continue to improve the living conditions of the security services to enable them provide effective protection for the state. This presentation forms part of my government's efforts to re-equip and retool the armed forces with the needed logistics to enable you to discharge your functions more efficiently and more effectively. 
The president later commissioned a newly constructed command officer's mess. A mission story tonight only 92 out of 300 persons with disability applied for the three percent district assembly common fund for persons with disability in 2018 actually benefited from the fund in the following report Porsche Gabo assesses the disbursement of the fund in the Pong Katamanso municipality of the Greater Accra region Twenty-seven-year-old Mohamed Dramani is a natural talent. He uses his lips to make beats. He tells me he wants to become a sound engineer, but there's a challenge. Mohamed is physically challenged and had to overcome obstacles to even complete senior high school. He's unable to continue his education and gain employment due to his disability. Okay, sometimes you know you you write some of the CVs to I mean some companies because of the conditions. They will not know how to, I mean, even give you a position for you to occupy in there. So I asked him if he knew about the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, they are helping the disabled ones to, I mean, to make life for themselves. You know? Yeah, I even went there to receive a forms from there. So, I mean, you can see this is a form that I took from the District Common Fund. And although he told me he picked the form last year, he has not been able to fill it. He's also unable to present the form at the offices at the Social Welfare Department in the Don Katamanso municipality due to financial challenges. Mohammed's story could, however, be different. The mission team was in the Pong Katamansu municipality of the Greater Accra region to assess the 3% common fund for persons with disability. The aim of the District Assembly Common Fund for Persons with Disability is to minimize poverty among all persons living with disability, particularly those outside the formal sector of employment, and also to ensure the enhancement of their image through labor. The beneficiaries have been assisted in the areas of education, health and business, with some benefiting as much as 5,000 cities. We look at various needs. We don't pay with school fees because that must be paid timely. Medical bills will be paid promptly. Then empowerment, that was when we select those who, because the money cannot go around, just a few. And then those who, uh, and we're not able to get, we put them on the waiting list so that when we get the next consignment, the, the next chunk of money, we attend to them. Those who have benefited say their lives have been transformed. Nuete Solomon is one of the beneficiaries. He got a knitting machine and has been able to make meaningful income through the 3% District Assembly Common Fund for persons with disability. It's been very helpful. Previously, money was disbursed to some of us, but many people misused that fund. Tete Wontri is also a beneficiary. He now sells paint in the shop. The items uh, I got, if I, I bury it, uh, it's more than 4,000. So I do appreciate uh, what they've done for us. Uh, I get uh, emotion paint, acrylic uh, paint. But uh, here they don't buy. So I send it back and change the normal, uh, normal paint. Uh, what uh, I want them to do for us is any time we request for something, they have to involve with the uh, uh, disabled. If we wrote to them and then they don't understand what we want, uh, they should approach us. Madame Elizabeth Owusu through the fund now sells groceries and has a provision shop. <laughs> Mohammed 
Even though the District Assembly Common Fund for Persons with Disability has been helpful and aided most of us, I prefer the money because I have bills to pay. Eric Na is the chairman of the Ghana Society of the Physically Disabled in the Tom Katamanso municipality. It really changed uh, our life. It, you know, um, initially the money has been given out, and you know when we go to when we go to monetary evaluation, uh, we met nothing. We are having a challenge with the, the phone because if the phone is coming constantly, you know, uh, you know, I've um, been given this time. My brother or sister somewhere know that the next time it will be he or her turn, so they can wait. So we need the money to be, come regular. Now we're having that three percent, uh, but if it can be, we have about five, uh, four or five. Uh, we only work with for more. <laughs> Seeing how persons with disability have benefited from the fund, the mission team assisted and invited Mohammed to the Forum of Persons Living with Disability to meet up with the director in charge of social welfare. Okay, Mohammed, I've received the application. You've indicated that you want to be trained as a sound engineer. Have you gone to see anybody who will train you as an engineer? I yeah, I went and see someone, but it seems the person has traveled outside the country. So how do we get the the amount you yes he, he gave me some of the things that i will buy myself you need the offer letter that indicates the amount that he's being charged i called one um training school they said it would take that is three thousand okay so go and bring the offer letter because we have to work with that the money the fees will not be paid to you we have to pay to the school directly okay then i'll go to the school and get the forms and bring it Mohammed is a happy man now and grateful to the team. Hopefully, when he brings the admission letter from the school, he will be able to pursue his hopes of becoming a sound engineer. Poshigabo, TV3 News, Boon. Oh, Star Ghana was brought to you, I beg your pardon, mission is brought to you by Star Ghana with funding for, from Danida, UK Aid and the European Union. You're still live on News 360. We take a break, we'll be back with business. Hello, good evening and welcome to the business news segment of News 360. My name is Pa Kwesi Asari. Let's begin with happenings uh, in, in Ghana with regards to the International Monetary Fund. And the IMF says the banking reforms being undertaken by the central bank will help improve medium-term prospects for economic growth. The IMF review mission to Ghana noted uh, commitment to financial stability was key in exiting the fund's program. The authorities have shown great commitment to financial stability with the resolution of nine banks in a period of, t of time that it is less than 18 months, which is really, I can tell you, unprecedented, I think, by, by many, many standards. I, I, I am personally not aware of any country that has done that. And this will help improve medium-term prospects for economic growth. The overall financial system is adequately capitalized and well positioned to support credit growth and investment going forward. Annalisa Fedlino praised the central bank for introducing measures to strengthen its supervision framework. We also discussed risks to the outlook and vulnerabilities stemming from exposures to external sources of funding and potential policy slippages. To mitigate these risks, the authorities, as you all know, have renewed efforts to strengthen external buffers and have also enacted legislation that introduces a fiscal rule that set a cap on the, on the budget deficit and have established a fiscal council to underpin fiscal discipline and preserve macroeconomic gains made in the last two years. She was confident the board will conclude the extended credit facility. The board will consider the seven and the eight review subject to us fulfilling all the remaining conditions, which I am confident we will by the end of March and then essentially will mark the end of the ECF supported program. Elsewhere, President Akufado has called on Ghanaians to shun financial schemes which promise extraordinary returns. The president, who has answered a question on activities of men's gold at a deba with officers at the Bema camp, said government has put in place measures to regulate the financial sector. The president was interacting with officers on pertinent issues affecting their activities, answering a question on what government would do for military officers 
who have their monies locked up with men's gold. The president charged the public to shun companies who promise outrageous returns. I would like 10-15% return on my small monies every month. I would love it. But it's not realistic. So the plea I'm making, whenever you hear schemes that come to say they're given to give you money that is extraordinary in its returns, have to be careful about patronizing it. These are the schemes that have taken place in our own country and all across the world. And invariably, they've been founded to be very fraudulent and suspicious. Finance Minister Ken Oferata urged the public to be disciplined in the management of their finances. You know that if somebody is investing in gold, there's just no way they can give you 20%. So we need to examine ourselves as to the type of sentiment, whether it is um, overzealousness um, to get a return which is impossible and therefore what element of greed we have that we are exercising this. And when a company does not have um, a license to do something and you choose to go there, um, I think it's an issue that we need to contend with. So I think we have come up with a realization that maybe over 200 million um, and change is outstanding. Um, he has been apprehended in um, Dubai uh, I'm sure a committee will be put together to see how to liquidate uh, and whatever it is that can be found can be given to those who gave money. In other news, Silver Star Auto Limited has officially unveiled the Susugi Sias and the Vitara Onto. Vitara onto the Ghanaian market. The chief executive officer, Asad Nazi, said the company is poised to ensure customer satisfaction and safety. The latest modules from Suzuki Ghana can boost of a smart play infotainment system, rear parking sensors, reverse camera push, start leather seat, and voice command amongst others. The Suzuki, Sears, and Vitara cars have also been designed with high power speed performance systems, the best on the market. The chief executive director of Silver Star Auto Limited, Asad Nazi, assured customers of prioritizing their needs by presenting them with the best. To make sure that we don't take our customers for granted, we always want to give them the latest products possible on the market. These cars are now carrying the latest 2019 features that are available in the market. And Business head of Suzuki, Kwekusin Tim Buama, gave distinct features of the Suzuki, Sears and Vitara, which make them different from other vehicles on the market. Regarding safety, the usual airbags, the usual uh, electronic stabilizing control, the usual cruise control is there. It's also got a phone interface, what we call the CarPlay iPhone interface that it has, uh, which is also a touch screen. Uh, it's also got a new vents at the back for the air condition. These are all new additions. Silver Star Auto Limited was incorporated in the Ghanaian market in 1996 to provide quality service to its cherished customers. That's all for the business report on News 360. My name is Parku Tiasari. For more business news stories, do log on to our website, 3news.com. Over to you, uh, Aisha and Alfred. Thank you, Parker Seward Business. Now, the Junction Mall has awarded bursary schemes to six pupils from six different government schools in the Crowwalk Municipal Assembly. The scheme will support each of these selected pupils for the rest of the academic year. The bursary scheme is an educational scholarship for the needy but brilliant students from six selected schools in the municipality. It is the first educational scholarship by Junction Mall and forms part of the social responsibility of the mall to the Crowe municipality. We will offer them branded books. We will give them we pay tuition and any other fees. We will give them uniforms. We will give them stipends. I think any support that will aid their education process will be looked at. We, we, are, we are into the, the, the core 
is to make sure that they go to the very highest level of education as much as possible. Whatever their abilities can take them. Municipal Chief Executive Joshua Nibote lauded Junction Mall for the initiative. It means a lot because there are a lot there whose parents don't have the means really to pay for their education. So with this thing coming on, it's just very, very good for the municipality. A representative from the Ghana Education Service, Esther Gentu, advised beneficiaries to make good use of the opportunity afforded them. A beneficiary, Kafri Togo, expressed his appreciation. I feel so happy about this scholarship because my mother is a single parent and I feel proud for her because of this scholarship. It has taken a big burden from her and all my family are very happy and God bless Junction Mall. The Junction Mall was launched in November 2014. It offers shoppers a wide variety of international brands and serves a catchment population of 665,000. Let's go to Nigeria now and the acting inspector general of police in Nigeria, Mohamed Adamu, says security has been heightened for Saturday's elections. Addressing the media, the acting IGP asked police personnel to be professional in dealing with people who may flout the electoral law. I have explained severally to Nigerians that the security of the, of the electorate, the observers, the INEX staff, the electoral materials are all secured. Maximum security is provided before the election, during the election, and after the election. In the polling booth or polling unit, there will be security, at least three security personnel will be there to protect the electorate, to protect the INEC, INEC officials, and also to protect the electoral materials. The personnel that will be there will not be armed, so there is no need for apprehension. Let's just stay in Nigeria, because the head of the ECOWAS election monitoring team to Nigeria and former Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf is saying that she is satisfied with progress of Nigeria's INEC ahead of Saturday's polls answering a question from TV3's Komla Kluche in Abuja after a short media briefing. Ellen johnson Sirleaf says she is confident decisions taken by the state security apparatus is in the interest of all Nigerians. That the same level of maturity will be demonstrated during the remaining phase of the electoral process. We applaud Nigeria for the pivotal role played in maintaining peace and the restoration of democracy in our sub-region. What do you make of the accusations that has come from all the parties against INEC that uh, they have not been fair to the two leading parties? This came from both the APC and the PDP. Nigeria allows free and fair elections to take place on tomorrow. I think the security forces have done their best as evidenced by the relative calm and security that we find all over the country. And so we're confident that on tomorrow they will continue to maintain that peace and the protection of voters as they exercise their civic responsibility. INEC 
has had a tremendous job trying to meet all the requirements of this election in its enormity, getting documents to places, ensuring that people are well in place, ensuring that all the apparatus of an elections are functioning. Now, Ghana has launched a protest challenging the European Commission's decision to blacklist her as one of the countries with deficiencies in strategic anti-money laundering and combating the financing of terrorism. Answering questions at an accountability forum in Accra, the Financial Intelligence Center says the criteria used by the European Commission is unknown to Ghana, hence the protest. Anti-money laundering, AML, is a set of procedures, laws and regulations designed to stop the practice of generating income through illegal actions. Though anti-money laundering laws cover a relatively limited number of transactions and criminal behaviors, their implications are far-reaching. Combating the financing of terrorism, CFT, on the other hand, involves investigating analyzing, deterring and preventing sources of funding for activities intended to achieve political, religious or ideological goals through violence and the threat of violence against civilians. The global standard setting body in money laundering and terrorism financing, the Financial Action Task Force, TAFAT, in 2012, blacklisted Ghana based on some deficiencies which the country rectified in just six months. So it came as a surprise how the European Union got the country blacklisted. It came as a surprise because we have just concluded our mutual evaluation report with the Financial Action Task Force. The global standard setting body in money laundering and terrorism financing. The deputy chief manager at the financial center explained why Ghana is challenging the European Union's action. We think that we have not been treated fairly because whenever you want to blacklist a country, they have the right to listen to the deficiencies that you have identified. They have a right to respond to those deficiencies and find out the actions that are being undertaken to rectify that. Now, the Ministry of Finance wasn't consulted. The Financial Intelligence Center wasn't consulted. In fact, we don't know the people who the EU consulted. He further refuted claims that Ghana is not doing well in combating the financing of terrorism, CFT, and anti-money laundering, AML. We did meet with FATF last year, and they were impressed with the strides that Ghana was taking in respect of remediating all those deficiencies and proposed to us an action plan. Indeed, in January this year, we met with them in Dubai and they were very impressed and even extended 2020. On News 360, we're live on DSTV Channel 279. Stay with us. Hello there, good evening. My name is Miriam Osei Adjuman. It's time to do some entertainment news tonight. Day one of the mating edition of TV3's Next Stop Actors audition saw a massive turn up as hundreds trooped into the network's premises to try their luck. The auditions will offer participants the opportunity to build a successful career in acting. You can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. In the hall of fame. Hundreds turned up to be part of the life changing reality show which is geared at building a stronger human resource base for the growth of the acting industry. Hmm. Charles, if you know what is good for you, don't come home tonight. Do you understand? Oh, man. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. See, the alcohol has finally cleared in my eye. See, I can see. Please, watch out. For the young, talented folks, it will be a dream come true to sail through the auditioning stage. Aspiring actors shared the expectations. I have not seen anything like this in Ghana. Um, something bringing out actors as young and coming. So I think it's a good initiative and I'm just hoping for the best. That I get picked and take it out from there. It takes 
one chance to hit the spotlight and then i found my chance in this particular one and once i get in there i have to do my best i mean probably put put on my best acting suit and then give them the best so that i'll reach the particular top 10 they're actually requiring and it's very difficult to actually make it on your own trying to trying to come out into the industry so if there's an opportunity like this i have to take advantage of it that is why i'm here participants who have made it through the auditioning for the day shared their experience the experience in there was was a blast i was so nervous but when i got in there the judges were so welcoming they were amazing like they made me feel so comfortable on the spot and it was it was beautiful i just flow Now we're from acting, talented singer and songwriter Gladstorm Kwabena Akwabwa Jr., otherwise known in the entertainment circle as Akwabwa, is set to excite audience with classical high life tunes on Music Music come tomorrow Saturday. Love go Phoebe, but if she won't touch me, then she start to annoy me. When she call me plenty, I don't know why. Signed onto the Success Music label, High Life singer Akwabwa will this weekend treat the audience and viewers of Music Music to a collection of good tunes. I'm good. I wanna be with you. Yes, it's me, Akwabwa. And come Saturday on TV3, I'm gonna be there, Music Music Live. And this time, it's all about live session. Mama, why you see me and catch me? Come, let's have fun. What you say? Music Music. It's big. Popular for his lyrics and melodious tracks, the audience will have nothing but the best of classical high life music from this repertoire. And that's mm -hmm. about it for entertainment news tonight. Make sure you don't miss out on music, music come tomorrow. Yeah. There's more news on 3 it's news com and Miriam. <laughs> music, music is big. It, yes, Bigger. it is. Yeah, tomorrow Absolutely. we'll be there. I love Akwabwa. The, the other name, Gladstorm. Gladstorm. Mm -hmm. How is that? Gladstorm. It's like Donny Hugh, Bresford. <laughs> I mean, look. My name it's is Alfred Okansi, is, is what? Bresford. Bresford. <laughs> All right. And Thank I am you. Aisha Yakubu. Enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>